Should you become a physicist in 2022? In this video, we're gonna help you explore whether this particular occupation is for you. We're gonna compare physicists to mathematicians and other similar occupations. We're gonna go over base salaries, the jobs market, and more. We're actually even gonna look at job postings for physicists. But first, what is a physicist and what do they do? Physicists study the interaction of matter and energy and how to apply that knowledge to solve scientific and technological problems. Physicists investigate the known universe. They come up with new theories to explain time, matter, and other concepts of the physical world. There are theoretical physicists that create theories and models to explain the behavior of specific aspects of the world. There are experimental physicists. They test physics theories and models to verify their claims. And finally, there is applied physicists. These physicists are concerned with solving problems in technology, science, and society. If you end up becoming a physicist, you're probably gonna work in one of three different industries. In fact, according to the government, about 31% of employed physicists work in research and development, 20% work for the federal government, and 20% work in higher education. One advantage to becoming a physicist is they actually self-report pretty high job satisfaction and meeting, at least according to the Payscale Meaning Survey. Back in 2013 and 2015, Payscale did a meaningful job survey, and they asked two questions. How satisfied are you with your job and does your work make the world a better place? So if you're interested in this list, just go to lists, full list, and actually, we're actually gonna look at physicists. And according to employed physicists, about 79% reported that they believe that their work is making the world a better place and 77% are reporting high job satisfaction. And this is pretty good. This is actually almost up there with registered nurses. Registered nurses, it's 80 and 71. So they're not at the top of the list. Clergy and uh, surgeons would be at the top of the list and English teachers teaching at a post-secondary level, but they're actually pretty far up the list. There's plenty of other occupations that report much lower meaning scores and job satisfaction scores. So if you end up choosing to become a physicist and you end up becoming a physicist because we're actually later in the video, we're gonna get into actually how challenging it is to actually become a physicist in 2022. But if you do end up becoming a physicist, you might also report high meaning. You might find a lot of meaning in your particular work, and you might also be pretty happy with your particular job. Now, speaking of choosing a career or choosing an occupation, if you are having trouble with this, we have you covered. Choose the Right Career is a seven-step process for choosing the right career for you. We start with over a thousand potential occupations, and we narrow it down to that one right career for you. We look at your interests, your personality, your values, and more, including geography, labor markets, pretty much everything. We take all this into account to try and choose the right career for you. Check out the link below for more information. So the fact that a lot of physicists report high meaning and high job satisfaction is a huge advantage and a huge plus to becoming a physicist. Now, a big con to becoming a physicist is the barrier to entry. And you need a lot of education to become a physicist. According to the Occupational Information Network, 8% of employed physicists have a master's degree plus some kind of certificate, 49% have a doctoral degree, and 39% have a postdoctoral degree. So the vast majority of employed physicists have a master's degree or beyond. Now this doesn't mean if you go and get a master's degree in physics or a PhD in physics, a lot of these people actually don't become physicists. They can wind up in other occupations. They can potentially become mathematicians. They can potentially become software developers. They can be become data scientists. The physics degree has a lot of transferable skills into so many different occupations, but we're focused on physics roles. So definitely keep in mind, this is a very challenging occupation to get into. We're actually gonna go into the job numbers a little bit later. But first, I just wanna show you a couple of job postings for physicists. So one of my favorite job boards is actually just using the Google search engine. Just type in job posting, jobs, and then a location. Uh, press the enter key, click here, and then you get a lot of job postings from so many different job postings and job platforms, including LinkedIn, Glassdoor, jobs.com. So many different ones. And what you notice when you look through these particular job postings is you, you kind of see the three different industries. You see kind of labs, for example, to work at John Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, you most likely need, yep, a PhD in physics, electrical engineering, or a closely related field. So they're not just looking for potentially 
physicists, they're also open to electrical engineers that have a PhD. This would be a good example of a research and development kind of job posting. We'll see if we can find a, uh, oh, here, here we go, Berkeley lab. Here's another lab. Also requires a PhD in physics or nuclear engineering. So that's research and development. What about defense? To become a quantum physicist for Lockheed Martin, which is most likely a defense role, you would just need a master's degree in engineering, physics, or other relevant scientific field. And they're actually even open to a bachelor's degree with nine to 15 years of experience. We'll do one more job posting at Ohio State University. And yeah, this one doesn't require a doctoral degree either, just a master's degree with math and physics concentration, preferably medical physics. So going through a lot of the different job postings for physicists, you really see that the educational requirements can depend on the industry. If you're trying to do research and development, you most likely have to have a PhD or doctoral degree in, some, in physics, or they're kind of open to electrical engineers too. But it, if you're working for potentially a defense contractor like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, you might be able to just get in with a master's degree. And then there's certain occupations or certain particular roles that just require potentially just a bachelor's degree. But generally, you really do need a master's degree, at least a master's degree, to work as a physicist. So that covers the educational requirements to become a physicist. Next up, what kind of money can physicists expect to earn? They actually tend to earn pretty good money. The average base salary for a physicist in 2020 was $136,480. This was more than actuaries, data scientists, economists, mathematicians, professors, and software developers. So that's the average base salary, but certain industries tend to pay physicists way more than others. There's extreme inequality among physicists. In fact, according to the government, the healthcare industry tends to pay physicists the greatest base salary. The average physicist working in healthcare earned around 183,000 per year. Research and development around 144,000. Federal government around 125,000. And higher education around 83,000. So higher education is definitely lagging when it comes to pay for physicists. Also keep in mind that many physicists have a master's degree plus, and a lot of these people can have a lot of debt. So physicists can earn a really high wage, but it comes with kind of just like positions it can come with very high student loan debt. And the wage growth trend for physicists has actually been pretty good. The average base salary for a physicist in 2016 was around 122,000, by 2020 around 137,000. So pretty good wage growth over the past couple of years. So physicists can definitely earn a pretty high wage in certain industries, and they are seeing pretty good wage growth over time. But we're gonna get into another con of becoming a physicist, and this is the job market. The number of employed physicists has actually been dropping according to the government over the past couple of years. In 2016, according to the federal government, there were 16,680 employed physicists. This peaked in 2018 at 17,620. And in 2020, this dropped to 16,160. So there really aren't too many employed physicists in the US labor market and that their numbers aren't really growing that much over time. This is much different than, say, software developers or actuaries. They've seen historically much greater job growth, at least in their uh, workforces, over time. And unfortunately for physicists looking at job boards, this doesn't really look too much better. On Glassdoor.com, when I searched for physicist job postings in the US, I got 1,053 job postings. On Indeed, 1,628 in the United States. And on LinkedIn, 1,670 job postings. So when you compare the number of job postings for physicists against the number of employed physicists in the United States, it doesn't look too good. It looks really competitive, really challenging to get a job as a physicist. But keep in mind, physicists are gaining all these transferable skills. They can easily become software developers. They can become engineers. They can become mathematicians. First off, you have to understand that uh, majoring in math is one of the most least regretted college majors out there. So there's just so many job opportunities outside of physics that a lot of aspiring physicists can get and they can gravitate toward. So even if you end up pursuing physics and you don't make it, you don't end up getting a job as a physicist, there's so many other off ramps into other occupations that you definitely won't be unemployed. So those are some things to consider before becoming a physicist in 2022. What did you think of this video? Definitely leave a comment down below what you think. Are you trying to become a physicist or are you not trying to become a physicist for very specific reasons. Definitely leave a comment down below. And if you're interested in trying to find the right career for you, definitely check out our link 
down below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.